friend. My brother, there's not a friend. No, not one. I tell you, no, not one. who 
would silence the name we would share, yet we see a need for its truth everywhere. So with courage we'll answer, with mercy and faith proclaiming the good news of Jesus today, for that's what the world needs to hear. And we must let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our hearts that we will live for Christ alone. And we will give our lives to let it be known. Love that fills our words until each soul has heard. Let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our heart. Let it be known who we are. Let it be said with all our hearts that we will live for Christ alone. And we will give our lives to let it be known.
appreciate that good singing tonight. And uh, you're singing tonight like you desire to sing, like you desire to be at church tonight. And of course, I want to welcome you back this evening. Thank you for being here and being faithful to the house of God tonight. We're looking forward to a wonderful service, and I want to encourage you to get in. And don't, uh, don't uh, have your mind on what I'm going to do when I get out, what I'm going to do tomorrow and so forth this week. And uh, let's, get, let's be here, amen. Let's uh, be where we are and uh, get your attention, your mind, your focus to it uh, tonight. We want to pray and ask the Lord for his blessings tonight upon the service. And really for many uh, people that are having uh, physical and other needs in their lives. And I'm going to give you several to pray about. I want to encourage you to pray for Charles Poteet, and he is currently in the Encompass uh, Rehab Center. This is the Novant Rehab uh, there on Stratford Road, 158, and uh, he's been there about every time he'll go to the hospital. He'll be there for a week or two of recovery, and uh, so that generally helps him, and so let's pray for him, if you will, please, during this time, and also Dot Adams. It's good to see her tonight. Continue to pray for her, as I mentioned Wednesday or last Sunday. Ms. Adams has, has uh, decided to discontinue the chemotherapy. And so I want to encourage you to pray for her, that the Lord will allow her to live another 85 years. And, uh, and so uh, we want her to stick around here as long as possible. And so, but she's doing, it's good to see her tonight. Continue to pray for her. And then also, uh, let's pray for the Davis family, of course. Uh, Brady went home to be with the Lord as we sent out the call this week. And I want to encourage you to pray for Novella, his sister, and, of course, all of his family. He's got a son named Tony. Let's pray for them. The funeral service, as you know, will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock at the Hayworth Miller Chapel here in Louisville. And the visitation will be from 10 to 11. And I want to encourage you to get by and, and, and be with them and be an encouragement to them if you can tomorrow, okay? And then also Miss Barbara Falls. I mentioned her this morning. She's at home now. And uh, we're grateful that uh, they were able to figure out what was going on. And uh, Wayne said this morning that, she should be on the road to recovery, so we're grateful for that. Continue to pray for her, if you will. Randy Smith, remember him in prayer, going through some really trials there in his life. Hannah Craig's grandson, continue to pray for Cooper. And Chad Allen, Chad's here tonight. Pray for Chad. He's just not doing well at all, and uh, he's not able to eat anything hardly. And uh, so I really, he's lost a lot of weight, and I really want you to pray for Chad. The Lord would help him. He's got some tests coming up at the end of this week. And uh, I want you to be in prayer for that. Then also, Miss Bonnie Smith, uh, Miss Ellen Andrews was sharing with me just yesterday uh, that she had an incident where she fell out of a vehicle and got skin up and bruised, banged up really, really bad. And so I want to encourage you to pray for her. And uh, maybe some of you ladies can reach out to her and it'll be a blessing to her uh, during this time. All right. And then if you're here tonight, you have a need or a prayer request. You just need the Lord to help you tonight. Would you raise your hand? Let's seek the Lord tonight in prayer. And then we'll hear from the choir once again this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you so bless us with. Thank you for the opportunity to be back at church tonight. Thank you for a group of people being faithful, committed unto you. And Father, I pray tonight that you would meet the needs of some of our church family who are really going through some needs tonight. And I pray that you comfort them. Father, maybe some watching online tonight, they're not able to be here. I pray that you would be an encouragement and help to them. Father, I realize there's several. There's tra traveling and uh, different things. And, Father, some others who we didn't even mention are just sick and just dealing with allergies and this type of thing right now. And, Father, I pray that you be with them tonight. Bless the service. May you be honored and glorified through everything that's said and done. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir's going to sing for us. You listen to them as they sing. I know you'll be blessed tonight. Oh 
doing such a great job during practice tonight. I think they're ready for it tonight. Brother Holly says they need another week or two. And so, but they're doing so great. I love to hear them. And they're doing so great a job. Faithful. And let's stand together all over the building tonight. We're going to sing along with the choir. Another hymn. Give it all you've got. This is a happy, upbeat song. Sing with all your heart unto the Lord tonight. couple things with you really quickly and this is outside of our regular announcements just a couple things uh, that we want to mention and uh, th we need to discuss this uh, it's not really a discussion just some information I want to pass on to you uh, that we need to go over about once a year and uh, Matt Bennett uh, does our safety team as we mentioned this morning briefly uh, Matt Bennett would you stand Matt I don't, he just went out he just went out okay so all right, so maybe he'll come back. All right, we hope he will. Uh, Matt is a retired Winston-Salem police officer. I highly respect him. He's currently serving as one of our active deacons. We love Matt and Scarlett very much. We're grateful for them. Matt does a good job. I trust him completely. There he is. And, Brother Matt, I'm talking about you. 
Yeah. And uh, he just smiles and waves. And uh, <clears throat> But a couple things he mentioned to me, Pastor, we not, might need to mention a couple things regarding our safety team. We have uh, new members that may not know what we do and how we go about things and so forth. And, and I thought that's a good idea to go back over that and do that maybe once a year. So I just want to take just a few moments and talk about our safety team. And, uh, you know, we, we have the safety team. Um, because we live in such a day as you know and unfortunately there's a need for that now I hope that we will never experience any issues of any kind but you know I want to be prepared for something if something did happen I want to be uh, no you know be prepared for that and so we are and I'm grateful for that and uh, what we want to do is we want to, uh, let's do this let's uh, let's have all of our safety team members. Uh, I don't know who's up in the crow's nest. When we talk about the crow's nest, we're talking about the, the security safety team member who is uh, watching the video surveillance. And, uh, and they rotate, so it's not the same guy over every service. And um, Matt has them on a good rotation. But if you're on the safety team, would you stand right now, please? We want to just know who you are. I don't know if all of them are here. I know all of them are not here. We're missing a couple of guys. So we have a couple right now, okay? And Matt, who's upstairs tonight? Okay, Mark Bowles is upstairs right now. Tootie Farrington is also on the safety team, and I know he's out of town right now. Matt, are we missing anybody that we need to touch base with? Okay, so thank you guys, you can be seated. So these guys are rotating in and out, and um, uh, there's four or five of them, six maybe, as you can see. And um, what they're doing is they these guys uh, lock the doors at all times. Um, so if you if you leave this building, and you you can get out any doors at any time, but you you can't necessarily get in during a service time, okay? Because we we want to keep the doors locked. Here recently, just recently, matter of fact, we begin this today. Fifteen after these doors are being locked. Uh, they they weren't because we were watching the doors via video surveillance. But now we're locking those just for added security. Matt thought it would be a good idea, and I uh, commended him for that. And so we have a safety team member that's going to remain out there and let you in, and he's going to welcome you just like a, a welcome, uh, uh, someone who will welcome you to the service. And, uh, but if you arrive after 11.15, you can still get in, okay? They'll see you on the camera. They'll radio down to one of the other guys. They'll let you in. So you can come 1130, but just know that doors will be locked, okay? If you go over to the other building to take your child to the nursery or whatever you need to do, that's fine. The, again, the video surveillance guys, you can't do anything without being watched, okay? So they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna see you going out there, and they will unlock the door for you. So don't fret about that. Um, so I know that when my children are over in the educational building, I know they're being taken care of. They're being watched on video surveillance. Not the classrooms are not being watched, but the hallway, the outside, to all the doors and the parking lot, uh, the main rooms, Heritage Hall, the activity center. The individual classrooms are not, but all the, the way to get to them are completely covered. So I know I feel safe about my children being in the other building. I feel safe about being here. Uh, they lock all the doors. Um, if you go to a door and it's during a service for whatever reason and it's locked, just be patient. Understand that they're seeing you and they'll, they'll get to you as soon as they can in just a moment. So just be patient. Um, and then uh, also uh, they do have uh, their CCW, their, their concealed carry permit, okay? And so they're not going to make a big to-do out of that, but they do that. And I appreciate that. I feel very safe. And, uh, and so if you do, I know, uh, we I don't know, we probably have a lot of folks that have their CCW. And if you do that, that's fine, wonderful. But Matt has requested, if you do have that, to, to just let him know. That way, if it, in case an incident ever did happen, they would know, okay? And uh, that just gives them, and if you don't want to, that's fine, okay? We're not forcing you to do that, but that just helps him, okay? And just because you have your CCW doesn't mean you're on the safety team, okay? And uh, so uh, there's, there's men that we've sought out that we felt like would be good on the safety team. They have to have their CCW. These guys have gone through training, and uh, Matt is very clear about them, instructs them uh, what to do and situations and so forth. And so they're very educated in what they need to do to keep us safe at all times. Now, a couple things for our church family concerning safety. I want to mention this. Never, never, ever. Never, ever, never, never, you said how you won't. Never open outside doors 
okay? And I'm specifically referring to the educational building. If you're working over in the educational building, as far as a nursery worker, wiggle worm worker, uh, Sunday school teacher, Wednesday night worker, all, it doesn't matter. If you're working in the, in the educational building and somebody that you do not know knocks on the door, never open that door. Never open that door. I'm going to say it one more time. Never. Somebody's going to, after service, they're going to say, what did you say about those doors? <laughs> never open the doors if it's somebody that you don't know. Now, listen, if, 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 Jeff, if Jeff Sheik walks up and knocks on the door, listen, he's not going to hurt you, okay? <laughs> you know Jeff, okay? I'm talking about somebody you don't know. And they're going to say, hey, can you let me in, please? They have no business at, at, during the middle of service trying to get over in that building. It, this is what you need to say, okay? Uh, you will need to say, I'm not allowed to open the door. And you're not, because I'm telling you right now, never open the door. <clears throat> I'm not allowed to open the doors. A safety team member will be here in just a moment. If they, if, it, and they're just going to have to wait, okay? There's, there's, I don't know why they would want to be here and you don't know them. Okay, in the first place, right? So you don't need to open that door. All the doors are locked. Uh, you, they're, they're being watched, okay? And by you not opening the door, the safety team member knows they're not supposed to be in there. So they're going to come down and check on that, okay? And they'll take care of that. Again, just be patient. Give them about 60 seconds. Somebody should attend to that in just a moment, okay? So get more men. If somebody knocks on the door, again, I hope this never happens, but if it does, just say, I'm not allowed to open the doors. A safety team member will be here in just a moment. You don't have to call. You don't have to radio. You don't have to call a safety team member. They're seeing what's going on. They'll be there in just a minute, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, new policy also. Uh, I know I've probably told some of you classes, maybe Wednesday night, children's church, Sunday morning, Sunday school, different classes. During, when it warms up during the summertime, maybe you said, hey, Pastor, can we take our class outside? Uh, new policy, don't take your class outside. Uh, don't take your class under the breezeway, on the porches, on the playground. Keep them inside, okay? Uh, parents, when they take their child to the educational building, they're expecting to pick them up there, and we understand that it's just maybe for five minutes or whatever for recess. Keep them inside the building, obviously for safety purposes, okay? If that parent wants to take them outside afterwards, they're welcome to do that. But they're our responsibility, and it's just added uh, uh, It's just added. Uh, uh, surveillance for the security guys to watch and so just new policy and if you take them outside if I've told you you could do that before just uh, just understand it's a new policy keep them inside please at all times at all uh, of our educational time okay and then also again we are we're, we're not the, the, the reason for this nobody said hey I'm gonna do this or that nothing we have not got anything but I'm just simply saying we need to be prepared in the case that something were to happen in this auditorium don't mo get down, okay? You understand if you get up and you go to the door, you're, you're a target. You're making yourself a target. So you need to get down. Two things that happen. If you get down, one, you're, you're, you're not being seen by anybody because you're down in the floor in the chairs, okay? Number two, the safety team members can take care of business. They can't take care of business if they don't know what's going on because of chaos. I understand you say, I want to get out. Well, you'll get out probably a whole lot safer if you'll just get down first and let the safety team members take care of business, okay? And so just kind of keep that in mind, if you will. That helps with chaos. It just kind of eliminates that and just kind of lets the safety team members take care of what they're doing, okay? And so just keep these in mind. I don't want to scare you, but I just want to be prepared. We live in a day which we have to talk about that. It is unfortunate, but it is what it is. But I, I, tell you, I told you this morning, I say that again tonight, I feel safer here than I do in my home, own home, and, I, and I, I really mean that. I mean, at my home, listen, if you come in my home, you might not leave, okay? And I'm just being honest with you, okay? Listen, I have, I'm an American, and I believe in protecting my family, and God has blessed me with means to do that. And I'm just, I'm just not going to let you mess with my family. And, uh, and so I'm just saying. Now, you're, you're welcome. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? So, but, I, I, but I'll be honest, I feel safer here because I've got men that I trust, uh, all of our safety team members. They have background checks. They had to have that with their CCW. And uh, so I just trust these men. They, they have wisdom. 
and they've had training, and so I just trust them, and I'm grateful for them, and I'm grateful to be a part of this ministry, and so I appreciate that. All right, let's give our safety team members a hand. We appreciate what they do. Come to church every service with something in your ear. I, th I guess they get used to that, but I would get tired of it, so I appreciate what they do. All right, ushers, you come at this time, please, if you will, and we're going to receive our offering tonight. Let's all stand once again. Stretch your legs for just a moment, and uh, we're going to stand, receive our offering. Let's pray over the offering that God would use it for his honor and glory tonight. If you didn't get your tithe and offering in uh, this morning, and let's be sure to get that in tonight. All right, let's pray over the offering. Father, we love you. Thank you for your blessings upon this place in every way, in every area. And Father, we give you all the glory and the praise and thanksgiving for everything. We love you tonight. Bless each gift and giver, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. much. A couple of announcements really quickly tonight, and our birthdays are first here. We have many this week. Reagan Knight, happy birthday to you today. I'm going to sing happy birthday to you. Ready? No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to her. <laughs> she would never speak to me again. Uh, so happy birthday to you, Reagan. Happy birthday. Eight years old today. And then also uh, Avery Mosteller, of course, her and her family just joined our church. Um, Matt and Heather Mosdale are happy birthday to her tomorrow. Elizabeth Holly, happy birthday to you tomorrow. And then also Betty Hale, happy birthday to your mom, Miss Angela. We appreciate her so very much. I, I, I tell you, Miss Betty Hale, some of you don't know this, Miss Betty Hale is a um, former pastor's wife. Uh, Miss Angela's dad was a pastor in Yadkin County for many years. And uh, we're grateful. We're grateful, Miss Carolyn and Miss Angela and perhaps others, uh, Miss Trish. Um, we have a lot of different uh, PKs, okay, preacher's kids in our church that are grown now. And we're grateful for these, uh, young, these, these, these um, men and women that have grown up in preacher's homes and uh, got a taste of ministry and still love the Lord with all their heart. Not the ministry is wrong, but it's just, and uh, they still, they have a heart for the Lord. And I appreciate them. And I just thank the Lord for Miss Betty Hale and her many years of service in the ministry. Nolan Staley, happy birthday, buddy. If you're watching tonight, I know, I think you got an eye infection or something. I think your family was telling me. Happy birthday to you on the 21st. Miss Scarlett Bennett, your birthday is the 22nd. Are you 22 years old on the 22nd? Not hardly, 21, I assume. Okay, so happy birthday to Miss Scarlett. Matt and Sarah Bellamy, happy birthday to you guys on April 17th this week. And uh, Matt and Sarah, we have so many people from Moxville area and uh, coming to church here. We're grateful for them. And Matt and Scarlett, Matt and, <laughs> get it right one here in a minute, uh, Matt and, and Sarah Bellamy are one of them. But let's give all these a hand tonight. All right, a couple announcements here. Wednesday night service. We're looking forward to Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Remember, Kids for Truth program as well as teen program all happening Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. I want to encourage you to be here. Be in your place. Uh, come early and uh, be a part of also the outreach. We'll have a meal at 5 o'clock. Lord willing, we're looking forward to that. We'll go out knocking on doors, inviting others to church from 5.30 to 6.30. We need to get a count real quick if you're planning to come for the meal at 5 o'clock Wednesday night. Just hold your hand up real quick. Hold it there, hold it, and Brother Holly's going to count uh, real quick here. 
and then uh, we'll move on with the service. All right, thank you so much for your commitment with that. And, I, I, you know, we're not doing that to get results. We're doing that because we have a burden for the loss, and we want to see people saved. Amen? We want to see people in church, and so let's keep that in mind. I do want to mention this. On Wednesday night in here, we will be uh, continuing our series, Lord willing, on 2 Thessalonians. We'll be in chapter 2 on Wednesday nights, and we'll be talking about the man of sin. The wicked one, the Antichrist. And so I want you to be here tonight. And what happens to people? Have you ever heard um, the fact that a person, if they don't get saved, if they reject Christ right now, and the rapture of the church happens, of course they will not go to the rapture, through the rapture because they have, um, they're not saved. But then you ever heard that they'll go through the tribulation? That's true. They will believe a lie, okay? They will believe the, the lie of the Antichrist because God says, I'm giving you your chance now. I'm, I'm telling you how to be saved now. If you reject that during the, during the tribulation, you'll miss the rapture. During the tribulation, you'll believe the lie. You'll be deluded and, and your eyes will be blind through the Antichrist. We're going to be talking about all that. And so I want to encourage you to be here for that uh, for Wednesday night, okay? Also, sign up over here. Uh, by the media desk for the upcoming Dash game will be taking place July 21st on a Friday evening. Tickets are $8 a piece, and we just need to get a head count. I encourage everyone in our church to go, and this will be a great time. My family and I, we're signed up, and uh, we're looking forward to going and being a part of that uh, fun, fun time together as a church. And then also spring ladies meeting Thursday, May 11th. At 7 o'clock p.m., ladies, you will be encouraged by Miss Jennifer White. She's a great lady speaker, and she'll be teaching. I was getting ready to say preaching, maybe a little bit of that, I don't know. And, uh, but uh, teaching and speaking to you ladies and being an encouragement to you. Again, Thursday, May 11th, 7 o'clock, so be a part of that. After church tonight, uh, Brother Holly, uh, Miss Holly will be meeting with teens and parents. Okay, we have to post. Okay, we have to postpone that. Okay. All right, so we'll get that sometime soon. I know Brother Holly was going to have a meeting concerning uh, the Youth Congress coming up this summer. Really excited about sending off a lot of young people for that. And so he'll let you know about that when that happens. Okay? We have a special tonight. And as they get ready uh, to sing for us, I want you to take your Bibles, please, to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter number 33 in your Bibles. And we'll begin looking there tonight. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. We're going to continue our uh, message from this morning. And I trust it will be an encouragement and a blessing to you uh, tonight after we hear the special. with gold are laid where the tree of life is blooming and the roses never fade here they bloom but for a season soon their beauty is decayed I am going to a city where the roses never fade in in this world we have our troubles Satan snares we must evade we'll be free from all temptations where the roses never fade Loved ones gone to be with Jesus in their robes of white arrayed. Now are waiting for my coming where the roses never fade. Here they bloom but for a season. Soon their beauty is decayed. Soon their 
where beauty is decayed. I am going to a city where the roses never fade, where the roses never fade. Amen. Anna, I appreciate that tonight. Exodus chapter 33 in your Bible this evening. Thank you for Ms. Beverly for playing the organ. And uh, as always, Exodus chapter 33, look with me please in verse number 12. We're going to begin reading uh, where we picked up, uh, where we uh, were this morning, and uh, we'll continue on uh, tonight into new territory. Exodus chapter 33, look with me in verse number 12 once again. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Verse 14, And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And verse 17, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by my name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass with, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Father, we love you tonight. I thank you for your word, and I thank you for what it means to me. I thank you for speaking to my heart time and time and time from it. I thank you for the source of conviction that it brings into my life that steers me in the right direction. And Father, I thank you for the encouragement that it brings to my life. I thank you for the challenge that it brings to my life. And many other sources of comfort and many other areas, Father, which you speak to my heart. Thank you. I pray tonight that we would have hungry hearts from your word. I pray that you would lift me up out of myself and my own ability. Lord, I can do nothing, but I sincerely desire to be a blessing just momentarily to your people. And I pray that you would help us to hide these words in our heart, soak it up like a sponge, receive it, implement it, apply it, grow thereby. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. Help me. Give me clarity of mind. Help me. I need your grace and your mercy. And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking from this morning about strength for the journey. Moses, as we'll review for just a moment from this morning, Moses was one of the greatest leaders of all time. and He was used of the Lord in a great way to bring the people of God from slavery in Egypt into the promised land. That was the promised land because it was a land that God had promised Abram or Abraham many years ago. And so Moses has led them out of slavery into uh, really a desert land. Uh, God has miraculously parted the Red Sea. It was not ankle deep water. It was deep enough to where when Pharaoh and his men and his army of chariots went in after the children of Israel were drowned in that sea. And so they went through on safely on the other side and and the people, as we mentioned this morning, were constantly griping and complaining. Well, we don't have meat, and well, we don't have this, and we don't have that. And Moses had a hard time with that. And brings this up to real quick, uh, real uh, uh, briefly here, right before uh, we begin reading in chapter 33, we find a major mistake that the children of Israel had made. 
while Moses is up getting the commandments of God, and God writing his finger into the tables, tables of stone, the Ten Commandments, which we have in Exodus chapter 20. And Moses has uh, the, the Ten Commandments, and he's coming down from Mount Sinai, and he hears uh, the noise of the people. They're playing, and they're just partying, really, is what they're doing. And they're worshiping a golden calf. They're worshiping a golden calf. Moses gets upset. He throws the tablets down and they break in pieces. And Moses goes to the Lord after dealing with this issue. And Moses, as where we're picking up in chapter 33, is basically saying, Lord, I need your grace. Lord, I need your strength for the rest of of this journey of taking the children of Israel on into the promised land. We asked this question this morning, do you ever feel like you need strength for your journey? A strength in your life, emotional and mental and physical strength for your life. And I think every one of us can put ourselves in this situation that we need strength for our individual journey. We talked about if you weren't here this morning, if you're other areas of service and the ministry here, we said that number one, we talked about Moses was in this predicament. In verse number 12, he said, Lord, you've commanded me to bring up this, your people. It's your people. And you've commanded me, you've given me this responsibility to bring up your people. But Lord, I am not competent to do it. I do not have the ability in myself. We talked about the weight of that task upon Moses's shoulders his mind a waning of the task and sometimes we find ourselves like Moses in a predicament maybe it's a financial maybe it's a marital maybe it's a physical emotional spiritual matter of a predicament in our lives where we say Lord I cannot go on along my journey I must have your grace and your strength we find that secondly this from this morning that Moses pleaded to the Lord he pleaded to the Lord for guidance Lord, show me, he says in verse 13, show me now thy way. Show me, Lord, the way that you need me to take because I don't know which way to go. You ever been in that situation? You didn't know which path to take. You didn't know which option to choose. You had a couple of choices with a predicament that you were faced with in your life, but you didn't know what to do. And you said, Lord, show me thy way. God will always do that. And sometimes we just have to say, Lord, I'm doing my best. I don't really know what to do, but I've thought about it. I've sought you. And right now I'm going to trust you. And can I say this? Sometimes, sometimes you do have to step. And by the way, it's called faith. That means you can't see the, the, the step ahead. That means you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11, 1. And so sometimes we do have to just say, Lord, I have a couple options and I don't know which one to take. I've thought about this for days and weeks and months. I don't know really what to do, but I, I, don't, feel, I, I don't feel any opposition in my heart. I feel peace about it. And Lord, I'm scared to death, but I'm going to trust in you. And you'll never go wrong doing that. Because God, no matter what decision you take, if, it's, if you've prayed about it and you have peace in your heart about it and you're trusting the Lord, God can work all things out for your good. God can take that situation, turn around, but pray about it, seek the Lord. Sometimes we have to trust Him uh, when we don't know what to do. Moses is pleading for God's guidance. He's pleading for God's grace. Oh, we need God's grace, don't we? And then we find, and we'll talk about tonight, he pleaded for God's glory. Thirdly, we talked about God's promise to him. We found God promised him two different things. In verse number 14, look there with me. In verse number 14, we find that God told Moses, My presence shall go with thee. And then we also found not only God was promising Moses his presence, but God was promising Moses that he would give him rest. And we looked in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 and corresponded that rest that God gives. Now, new ground tonight. Number four, I want you to notice Moses' passion. Now look with me in verse 14 once again, verse number 14 and 15. Look here in your Bibles. And he said, God responded to Moses, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. In verse 15, look at what Moses responded. And he said unto him, Moses said, Lord, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up 
hands. Good, good, good verse to underscore in your Bible, to hide in your heart. Moses had such a passion for the Lord that he had this mentality and he spoke it from his lips. He said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I have no desire to go forward. Lord, if I don't have your blessings, I don't want to take another step forward. Lord, you've given me this, but I cannot do it in myself. I am incompetent. I do not have, by the way, the Bible teaches us in Corinthians, we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of you, as of the Lord. May God help us to have the same mindset of Moses. No wonder he was so used of God, because he had this heart of passion for the Lord. Lord, if your presence go not with me, I don't want to go. Do you ever have that in your life? Do you ever have that passion for the Lord? Lord, if I don't have your blessings, I don't want to go forward with this. Lord, if I'm not doing what you would have me to in your word, I don't want to go forward. Lord, if this is not the right future spouse for me, I, I don't want to go forward with this relationship. Lord, if this is not the right job that I should take, if, if I don't have your blessings upon this decision, Lord, I don't want to go forward with this. Lord, I, I'm passionate about your presence. I'm, Lord, I'm passionate, may we say, about your, your blessings and your touch upon my life. And Lord, if I don't have your blessings, if I don't have the peace of God in my life about this, I don't want to go forward. I just as, might as well just stop where I'm at. May we seek God's word about decisions that we make no matter how small, whether they're as small as knowing how to respond to a certain situation or as big as knowing how, who to marry. May we seek the Lord and God's word about decisions. May we seek God's wisdom about decisions. May we seek God's will about your decisions. Ephesians 5, 17, Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. May we always go forward in life with this passion. Lord, I, I, there's a song about that. If your presence go not with me, I don't want to go. And may we have that desire and that passion. Lord, I want everything I do, every decision I make, as we talked about Wednesday night, I want your stamp of approval on my life. Notice the next thing, number five in our series here tonight, Moses' prayer. Now this kind of goes along with this plea that we looked at this morning. But I want you to skip down with me to verse number 18. And we're going to find Moses' prayer unto the Lord. Look in verse number 18. Again, this is another great verse. And, uh, to, and there's really a whole lot here that you could draw out of. But I'm, we're really just making some real simple applications tonight. Verse number 18. Moses said this. I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now, that's very interesting, isn't it? So God has already said to Moses, Moses, my presence will go with you. Moses, I'm going to give you rest in your heart and your mind. Moses, I am going to give you grace. I am going to give you strength for the journey. But Moses had this, again, passion for the Lord. Lord, if you don't, I don't want to go forward. And then Moses says, Lord, show me thy glory. Very interesting here. Very interesting. This didn't happen to a lot of people in the Bible. Show me thy glory. Now, we have to understand that Moses is meeting with God in, 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 a, in, a, in a way that God revealed himself to him, not face to face, because he said, Moses, if I, if I show you my face, you can't live. The glory and the power of God is the, the, the power of God and the glory of God is so much, you can't live through that. So I'm going to put you in a cleft of the rock. And I'm going to pass by, and I'm going to put my hand there, and I'm going to remove my hand. You can see my backward parts, but you cannot see my face. And Moses, we're going to see more about that in just a second. Moses got to see a portion of the glory of God. And again, Moses was God's chosen man in many ways to reveal the law to his people. It's very important because through the law is the understanding that we are sinners. When we read the law, Paul says in the New Testament, when we read the Old Testament law, we understand that we can't keep it. 
we fail, we, we fail miserably, that we make mistakes. And uh, although we try to keep the law, it's just impossible because of our human nature. And because of, 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 of failing that, I understand that I can't. I am not righteous. I'm not perfect in my own, and I need Jesus. I need a Savior. And so we find that the law was very important, and God revealed himself in such a way to Moses. And Moses here has a passion, and, oh, Lord, to get some strength for the journey. Show me thy glory. Now... Uh, God, uh, we, do not under, we do not, you know, preach from Scripture. We do not see it in Scripture today for the New Testament church where God will show you His glory. But we do have Scriptures such as James 4, 8, where the Bible says, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. There's some way in the New Testament today, in today's age, in 2023, that God, maybe not in the situation that Moses saw, the glory of God, but God will reveal Himself to you in a, in a certain way that will give you strength for the journey. We call that the sweet presence of God. Sometimes he decides to uh, meet with us in a service and you sense that sweet presence of God. We sing the song, sweet holy spirit, sweet heavenly dove. And we're talking about the sweet presence of God that we feel. And, uh, you know, salvation is not based upon feelings. It's based upon what? Let me try that one more time. Okay. The answer is faith, okay? Uh, Christianity is not based upon feelings. It's based upon faith. It's based upon faith, faith in salvation. The just shall live by faith, not just live eternally by faith, but the just shall live each day by faith and trusting in the Lord. I'm not to live on feelings, but it sure does feel good sometimes to feel the sweet spirit of God. And I encourage you not to just do that in the services, in the choir singing, maybe when the when a special singing of the preaching of the word of God and you feel the sweet spirit of God giving you assurance and peace in your heart, but in your own Bible study and reading how God will meet with you. Listen, there's been so many times in my life when I said, Lord, I just, I need you. And I claim James 4, 8. Lord, you said in your word, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Listen, I need more. My wife is a godly, sweet, wonderful wife. What you see as church is what she is at home. And I am thankful for a godly wife, but I need more than what my wife can give me. I appreciate the friendship of Joe Eskridge. I appreciate the friendship of Jalen James. I appreciate the friendship of every one of you here this morning and or tonight. And I appreciate that. I covet that. Brother Holly, so many others. I appreciate every one of you. And you are a blessing to me to see your smile and since your spirit for the Lord. But listen, there's sometimes I can only get strength from the journey by spending time with God. Sometimes we need to, well, more than sometimes, all the time, we need to remember what Jesus said in the model prayer that he gave us during his earthly ministry. When Jesus, before he began saying, uh, give us day by day our daily bread, you know what the first thing he said when he said this is how hey, I'm going to teach you to pray he said you say this our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name in other words we need to take a moment to honor the Lord you say I've never sensed the sweet presence of God in my prayer life why don't you spend about five or ten minutes and just say I love you I love you thank you for loving me thank you for dying for me I love you. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my neighbors. Oh, they give me a hard time, but I thank you, Lord, for them. So I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for this. And start thinking about, Lord, you know, I don't have, I don't, I don't eat T-bone steak every night, but I thank you that I have a pack of nabs. Lord, I thank you that I may not have the best automobile in the world, but I thank you that I have a good dependable car. And start thinking, look, listen, it won't be long before you might be doing some happy dancing. <laughs> like David in the Psalms. Listen, it won't be long before you sense the sweet spirit of God. There's something real to that in James chapter 4, verse number 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. We're getting the application for what Moses sensed, and now he needed strength for the journey, so he said, Lord, show me thy glory. We don't see where we're supposed to pray for that in the New Testament church, but we're to seek the presence of God. Now, notice the last thing, and I want to spend just a few moments here in chapter 34. Look in chapter 34. In chapter 34, look with me in verse number 1. 
So after this situation where God reveals himself to Moses in a really unique way, we find in verse 34, verse number 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. What happened to the first? Yeah, he got angry and threw them down. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before uh, that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaim the name of the Lord. Look, this is not the message, but it's very, I want to read this. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression. Listen, I'm thankful he, he's done that for me. Keeping, we're trying to keep the Bible applicable tonight. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. In verse number 8, look what Moses did when he was near the presence of God. Verse 8, and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. We find a lot of times in Bible times, it is not, a, it is not what you see in a, in a worship, quote-unquote, worship service. It's not always true biblical worship. True biblical worship is we find Moses doing this by himself with his face on the ground. And listen to me, if you don't worship at home, we need to be careful about how much we worship in church. Uh, I, I want to privately worship before I publicly worship. Amen? And before, listen, before your heart, we need to make sure our hearts are pure and ready for worship before we ever walk in the doors. And so we have that bringing that spirit of worship with us. Amen? But I want you to notice, let's skip for sake of time, verse number 28. Verse number 28 so we're talking about Moses. He's on the Mount Sinai the second time getting the second tables of stone of the Ten Commandments. In verse 28, and he, that is Moses, chapter 34, verse 28, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. In verse number 29, and it came to pass, Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony, Moses' hand, and he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. In verse 30, And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh to him. Nigh to him. Verse 31, And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with them, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Very interesting. Now I want you to notice this last thought, and that is Moses' physical appearance. We find that Moses' face was radiating. Look again at verse 29, the end part of that verse 29. The skin of his face shone while he talked with him, that is, with the Lord. When Moses came down from the Mount Sinai, as he was spending time with the Lord, the people knew that he had been with the Lord. <laughs> he didn't have to tell them. Yeah, I've been walking with God today. They knew. Wow, there's something supernatural about that man. Let me ask you a question. How is it with you in application tonight? Do people know that you've been with the Lord? I believe it's obvious. 
to some people whether they've been with the Lord or not. Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. The Bible teaches us in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. If we're walking in the Spirit, if we're walking with God, if we're in communion with God, there's going to be some effects. You can't hide it. And there's some of them, or I'll read all of them to you, Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. If you're walking with God, it will be obvious through your love for other people. A love for enemies, as Christ commanded us. A love for people that maybe they despise you. You still love them like Christ loved them as well. And there'll be a spirit of love just flowing out of your heart. There will not be a spirit of hatred, a bit, spirit of bitterness. Listen, if you've got a spirit of bitterness and hatred in your heart, you can't tell me that you've been with God, who is love. And so we find that one of the fruit of the Spirit is love. One of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. By the way, you can't have one of these and not the other. You either have them all or none. It doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. It is singular. It says the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, you're going to have love. If you've been with God, you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to have joy. Everything's not always going to be honky-dory. You know that term, right? Everything's not going to be, oh, yay, <laughs> But you're going to have some joy that you know the Lord. That everything's going to be all right because God is in control. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's towards your fellow men, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Long-suffering or patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. That's very familiar. Didn't we read that? That God, His goodness was be revealed as He passed by Moses. And when you're with God, you're going to be filled with the Spirit of God and you're going to have these things. Love and joy and peace will be radiating out of your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You'll be patient with your fellow man as God is long-suffering and patient towards you and I. Patient, gentle. It will not be a harsh, critical, upset with everybody. It will be a gentle spirit as God is gentle with His children. A goodness, faith. There'll be a spirit of faith. There won't be a spirit of doubt and a spirit of pessimism and, and all of that, a spirit of optimism, faith. And I believe what God can do in the situation. Meekness, humbleness. When you've been with God, you will not be a prideful person. God hates pride. God will look upon, God uses the humble. There'll be a spirit of meekness and temperance. Self-control is temperance. I wonder about this. How about, and we're going to move on, but how about it with you? Is it obvious that you are walking with God in your life? I so want my children to know that they have a daddy that walks with God. God knows my heart, not in a prideful way, but listen. Would you be honest with me that this world needs to see some people of God that are genuine and not of this world? God help us. And so his physical appearance, he was radiating Notice the realization here. Verse number 29. Look there with me quickly tonight. In verse number 29, we find that when Moses came down, he wist not. He didn't understand. He didn't realize he was face was glowing. In verse 29, the end of, last part of that, verse 29, Moses wist not the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. I'm going to read to you a comment that I read as I was studying this by John Butler. Listen carefully. I thought it was very good. Moses was not aware of the glowing of his face. Only those who saw him were aware of the glowing. Being with God for those days would keep Moses from being aware of his own glory. For the presence of God was so much greater in effect that Moses' own condition would not be impressive compared to God's condition. We need to view ourselves, John Butler says, in relationship to God's glory, it will keep us humble about our own condition. Come here for a minute. Do you want to be used of God? I do. God cannot use pride. Amen. And when you, listen, choir, you're doing so great. You're doing so great. That's why I haven't joined you yet. You're doing so great. <laughs> you're doing so great. You're doing so great. You're singing out, you're getting compliments. Oh, you're doing so good, choir. 
Don't let that get to your head. God is blessing so much in so many different areas. Do not let that become prideful to you. Because the minute you become prideful, God says, can't let you be used now. God puts down those who become prideful. God says, if you want to run the show, I'll let you. But God help us to have this humble attitude. And when we spend time with God in His presence, it humbles us because we see Him and not ourselves. And that's what was happening to Moses. He wasn't seeing he as a leader. Moses was not seeing he as a, a leader and one of the world's, if not the world's greatest leader as far as mankind is concerned by leading people through the desert. One point, one or two, three, perhaps other, greater than that even, some perhaps would say. And he did not look upon himself as a great spiritual leader and one who met with God, but he was all about seeing God's presence. And in light of God's power and his presence, Moses saw him nothing of himself. And may God help us with that. Notice not only his radiation, but his realization. He didn't realize he was faced with shining. Everybody else did. But then the third, the last thing that I want us to say, talk to you about tonight is the response here. In verse number 32 and 33, we just read it. They were so afraid. The people of Israel were so afraid when he came back down from the mount. He had to put a veil on his face to cover his face because his face was glowing. The people, the children of Israel were so scared of him. They were afraid of him, literally, because of this glowing. They didn't know what was going on. And they were like, whoa. And so Moses, in order to speak to them, he put this veil over his face. There's an application there, and I'll leave you with this. In order to be effective in the work of the Lord, people must not see you and I, but they must see the Lord. I'll leave you with this verse, John the Baptist, one of the great men of the Bible. What did he say in John 3.30? He must increase, but I must decrease. As long as people see Josh Bowles, they will not see much of Christ. As long as people see much of you and your personality and all about you, if life is all about you, then what, what, we're ha what we're doing in our relationship is we're robbing them from, from connecting them to Christ. If, if God, if I want him to be magnified in my life, life can't be about me. My goals, my ambitions, my dreams, my career. It just simply needs to be about the Lord. The world does not understand that. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, they would criticize that. Because the world says, be all you can be, you do this, you do this. May God's people say, no, I'm trusting in God. He's the one who saved me. I want to be used of Him. So I'm going to spend time with Him because I realize that I'm nothing without Him and I want to keep my life humble and I, I need strength for this journey. I want to have a passion to, to spend time with the Lord. And can I say this in closing? That is going to be one of the greatest strengths that you have is your passion for the Lord and spending time with Him and that will humble us and cause others to see Christ within us in our lives. How is it with your heart tonight? Do you have a passion for the Lord? Do you have a need for strength for the journey? I believe it will be very helpful for us if we'll have a passion for the Lord in our journey of life. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. I know we didn't talk much about salvation, but if you're here tonight and do not know Jesus as your Savior, don't leave without trusting in Christ as your Savior tonight. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, the instruments are going to play tonight softly. In just a moment, we're going to stand. And when we stand, I want to ask you a question. If you have a need tonight, would you find yourself on the altar? Would you come? Would you pray? Would you say, Lord, I want to have a passion for you. I want to have a hunger and thirst after you and your presence. I want to be used of you. And I realize as long as people see me, they will never see you. I must uh, you must increase, but I must decrease. Let's all stand together with heads bowed, eyes are closed as the musicians play softly. Folks have come. Some, how about it? How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, ma'am? Do you have a passion to be with God? To spend time in His presence? Just playing softly tonight. I'm just a young person. I, I just don't know if that's for me, Paul. 
I wish when I was a teenager I would spend time with the Lord. Mom, Dad, you need strength for the journey. Child rearing is not easy. Parenting is not easy. Oh, may we spend time with God. Being a wife is not always easy. Being a husband is not always easy. Being a Christian is not always easy. I'm commanded by God in many ways to do things that's totally contrary to our flesh, forgiving others, loving our enemies. So many things, oh, but it's worth it. Christ to be magnified. Let's sing together the words. As folks continue to pray, sing it together. Think about it. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? Sing it together. No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Sing it all the chorus together now. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Think about it. the works tonight. His work shall not fail you. He promised. Think about it. for us. And I pray that you would help us to take it to heart tonight. We love you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Help us to spend time with you so that we would be more like you. We love you. Thank you for this wonderful group of people. I wish I could show them my heart for them. I love them so much. Thank you for what you're doing in this ministry. Please continue to bless. We sincerely desire for you to be magnified, not so that people see, wow, look what's going on down at Temple Baptist, but so people say, what a God, what a Savior, what a great God He's doing in that ministry. Father, we love you. Bless now the rest of the week. So many other events that take place in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want to tell you, I love you tonight. You're the best in the world. Great crowd, Sunday night. And uh, for this going into the springtime season, and uh, I love your spirit, I love your work, heart, your heart for the Lord to work for Him, and, and so many areas. So it's been a great day. I've been encouraged to be at church. You're an encouragement to me. And uh, you say, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to go. They're not going to miss me. Oh yes, I know. I see that empty seat. I know. If listen, if you sit in the seat more than three or four times, I know where you normally sit. And uh, so. Uh, but anyway, I love you tonight. Turn around. Don't forget about, si we have several sign-up sheets, a ladies' meeting. Don't wait till the last minute on these. A um, couple weeks for the ball game. Don't wait till the last minute, though. Keep all the announcements in the bulletin of mine. I love you. God bless you. You're dismissed.